to all uh, my topic is 13 steps in refraction the refractionist and optometrist we all of us knows about what is refraction what is the purpose of doing refraction and how to perform so in this what is the importance of following uh, the 13 steps is to determine correct refractive error and to give best correct visual acuity for the patient and to avoid under over corrections in refraction and to avoid errors in refraction so finally to give a good and quality of refraction and to give correct prescription to the patient and to improve patient satisfaction we have to follow this 13 steps let's see the 13 steps what they are number 1 receiving patient number 2 auto refractor pre complaints and history number 4 torchlight examination Five present glass power if available. Number six visual acuity examination. Number seven retina scopy. Eight distance vision correction. Nine binocular vision assessment. Number ten near vision correction. Number eleven PG comparison. Number twelve monocular pupillary distance. Number thirteen spectacle counselling. Usually when we talk about the refraction. Uh, the objective refraction and subjective refraction comes in your, in our mind immediately but apart from these two common steps we have to do all these 13 steps to do a good refraction let's see the detail one by one first receiving patient uh, always says first impression is the best impression so when the patient comes to you we uh, treat your patient and make them feel free and comfortable and explain them just about what you are going to do in the Uh, refraction room and ensure to ensure correct patient we always has to verify the id card with the k sheet number 2 auto refractometer yes we all very well know about this it's also called computer eye testing and refractometry uh, this helps to determine the refractive error and to decide about contact lens and measuring this k value is very much useful for astigmatism patient to rule out the cylindrical power and axis especially this is very helpful for the beginners to do the refraction and number 3 complaints and history uh, so always we have to uh, know about know about know about the present complaint like what is the purpose of visit that we have to uh, uh, we have to ask them clearly and then past medical history then family history we have to ask and for each complaint we have to ask onset and duration how long the patient has a problem and severity and location location like if suppose they are saying headache we have to ask like the headache is frontal headache or bitemporal headache like that we have to collect the details and any relevant associated symptoms if they are saying headache we can also ask about whether it is associated with any vomiting or giddiness and any similar problems in the past so these are the other details we have to collect from the patient and should document in the k sheet Uh, number 4 torchlight examination this is very important step in refraction because this helps to inspect the anterior segment uh, especially uh, the cornea when we see the cornea we have to see whether it is clear or hazy and pupil we have to see the three things action and shape and size and alignment also very important to see whether they have any phoria or atropia and eyelid eyelid also we have to see and then conjunctiva sclera an ocular movements whether the movements are normal or is there any restriction or limitation we have to see this all the things and also it helps to identify the conditions wise like redness allergy lid swelling the lens status keratoconus and etc so the torchlight examination is one of the important step in refraction number 5 present glass power yes always definitely we will uh, check the uh, present glass power if suppose they have uh, either with uh, hand neutralization or lensometer but along with the power checking we have to ask the duration and usage of the spectacle are they whether they are using regularly or irregularly irregularly that also we have to ask and also look for the type of spectacle and lens details and condition of the spectacle and satisfaction and optical center we have to measure only when necessary it's not necessary this step is not necessary for all the patients if suppose they are wearing glasses recently and they have a 
complaints of headache or eye pain or strain or not comfortable with their glasses then we have to check the optical center of the glasses the next step is visual acuity uh, so uncorrected visual acuity first you do it for distance and then uh, uncorrected visual acuity for near then if suppose they have any glasses check with the glasses uh, distance vision and then near vision and visual acuity when not improving to 6 by 6 use pinhole the next step is retinoscopy this is objective method and uh, this helps very very uh, very much for doing the refraction to identify the refractive error whether they have any refractive error or normal and to diagnose the refractive error like myopia or hypermetropia or astigmatism and to identify the conditions when we perform the retinoscopy we can also able to identify the cataract keratoconus or sometimes we able, uh, we we see two uh, double reflexes so if they have any uh, dislocated in the lens then we will see double reflex so these conditions also we can able to identify when we do the retinoscopy the next step is subjective refraction uh, when we do subjective refraction first you do it for distance vision first you check the unaided visual acuity and we have the clue from the retinoscopy and autorefractometer so based on the retinoscopy and autorefractometer we can uh, start our uh, corrections and avoid cylinder what is avoid cylinder if suppose they are going to wear the glasses first time better we can give a spherical correction if suppose example uh, they have a acceptance of minus 1.5 spherical with minus 0.5 cylindrical instead of giving this correction we can do a spherical equivalent minus 1.75 so you check the vision acute vision with both uh, compound correction and simple myopic correction if the visual acuity is equal in both the corrections then we can go ahead the spherical accept, uh, spherical correction for a, a good acceptance the next is axis variation so what is axis variation if suppose they are wearing glasses and uh, they are using cylindrical correction like 180 degree and your retinoscopy or the autorefractometer shows 10 degree then it's not necessary to change the axis unless there is a vision difference so axis variation unnecessarily we should not do the next is symmetrical axis symmetrical axis is what if suppose the one eye you are giving 180 degree and the other eye if you are getting 15 degree or 10 degree then you check vision the other eye also with 180 degree if the visual acuity is same with 180 and 10 degree we can go ahead with 180 degree symmetrical axis for better comfort so when we when we do the subjective refraction we have to consider these three things avoid cylindrical for first time user and unnecessary we should not change the axis and try to give the symmetrical axis for both eyes the next important thing is cycloplegic refraction so after giving the distance vision correction we have to decide about whether the patient needs any cycloplegic refraction or not uh, we tend to know the children definitely they have a very strong accommodation less than 10 years children and adolescents up to 21 years also we have to do the cycloplegic refraction and after 21 years who are having strong accommodation like suppose when you are doing the retinoscopy if you are getting variable reflexes or if you are not able to neutralize properly then we can understand it's due to the strong accommodation so that condition definitely they need a cycloplegic refraction and mismatch of retinoscopy and accept acceptance what is mismatch suppose if your retinoscopy shows less power and acceptance shows high or your retinoscopy shows high and your acceptance is less when you are getting like that mismatch of the power then definitely they need a cycloplegic refraction and the other condition there is a difference between the spectacle power and your current prescription so then also they need a cycloplegic refraction so these are the conditions definitely we have to do the cycloplegic refraction and before deciding the cycloplegic drops we have to make sure whether they have any history of seizures if suppose they have a history of seizures you do it uh, you do the dilatation with home eye drops otherwise we can go ahead uh, cyclopentlate drops for the dilatation uh, this is the supplementary test for spherical refinement uh, the fogging method is there and binocular balancing method is there and geogram is there so these are the three methods we can use for the spherical refinement uh, most commonly uh, we use binocular balancing 
the aim of binocular balancing is to keep the accommodation equal in both eyes. And uh, when the best corrected visual acuity is improving to 6 by 6 in both eyes, or the best corrected visual acuity is improving to 6 by 9, those conditions we can do the binocular balancing. The binocular balancing, three different methods are available. One is prism dissociation method, fogging method, and alternate occlusion method. There are three methods are there, but I would say the binocular balancing prism dissociation method is more easier for the both patient and examiner. And the next method is geogram test. Geogram test also, it's a good method for the spherical refinement. Uh, when we talk about the geogram test, we have to keep remember RAM. RAM, it means red add minus and gap, green add plus. When the patient says red is clear, you add minus lens and recheck. And when the patient says green clear, you add plus lens and you recheck the geogram test. And for this uh, cylindrical refinement, uh, also there are some methods are available. The first is JCC. This helps to refine the axis and power and auto refractometer also there and K reading and astigmatic fan and slit. This astigmatic fan and slit helps to refine the axis. But the JCC is more useful for the cylindrical refinement because this verify axis and power both. And the next step is binocular vision assessment. Uh, when the patient says headache or eye pain or eye strain or reading difficulty or when they read sometimes and if they're getting after the reading, if they're getting sleepiness or blur vision, then uh, they need to do binocular vision assessment. So in this binocular vision assessment, these are the parameters we have to check. The first is binocular single vision, stereopsis, corneal reflex, cover test, ocular movements, near point of convergence and near point of accommodation and accommodation response with MEM retinoscopy. MEM which means monocular estimation method of retinoscopy and negative relative accommodation and positive relative accommodation, fusion range and accommodation facility and virgins facility. The next is subjective near vision. So once we finish the distance vision correction, then we have to check the near vision uh, correction. So always with the distance vision correction, first you check the unaided near vision and then based on age, occupation, reading distance and working distance, we can add the near vision correction. This is here I shown the one table. This refers the age-based near vision correction. The next most important step is PG comparison. All the patients who are having glasses, we have to do the PG comparison. Uh, this step is very much useful, especially for high myopia patients and high hypermetropia patients. And uh, when we are changing the cylindrical axis and when changing the near vision ad. ad. So these are the conditions. This step is very much useful. The next step is monocular pupillary distance. Um, this monocular pupillary distance, we have to measure for both distance and near fixation. And uh, you, do, uh, you do the measurement for uniocularly. And this helps to avoid the decentration in lenses. And uh, through this, we can eliminate the unwanted prism effect in the lens. And the next step is last one, spectacle counseling. So patient, uh, based on the patient need, Patient need how we can understand from the compliance and from the occupation. We can understand what type, uh, what type of glasses they need, whether they need only for distance or only for near or both. And lens type also, we have to explain them clearly whether they need to go ahead with the progressive glasses or cryptoc or executive or D-shaped bifocals. Just to recall the steps, we have to do the receiving patient, autorefractometer, Compliance and history, torchlight examination, present glass power testing, and visual acuity, retinoscopy, distance vision correction, binocular vision assessment, near vision correction, PG comparison, monocular pupillary distance, and spectacle counseling. So, conclusion of my presentation follow these 13 steps, do a quality refraction, and avoid errors in refraction give a correct prescription to the patient and through this improve the patient satisfaction. Thank you.